right, everybody, welcome back. Today, we are diving deep into something pretty fascinating, uh, the future of Ray Skywalker and the Star Wars franchise as a whole on the big screen. Yeah, it's exciting. And uh, we've got some, like, some seriously juicy intel here straight from the Hollywood Reporter. They have a, a new article all about Lucasfilm's plans. And let me tell you, there is some drama, like serious behind the scenes drama going on right now. Well, I think it goes beyond just trauma. I yeah. mean, we're talking about the legacy of Star Wars, the future of the franchise, the the challenges of building a cinematic universe and balancing what diehard fans want with bringing in new audiences. A hundred percent. And this article just like drops this bombshell right off the bat. They say that industry insiders like really believe that Rey is the most valuable asset that Star Wars has. Yeah. Maybe even like the only one that they can really count on right now for, for like box office success. It's a big statement. I mean, it makes you think about where things are at with the franchise. Why, why would they say that? And I think, you know, we have to look at the the difficulty, really, that Lucasfilm has had creating new characters that resonate with audiences the same way that the original characters did, you know, like Luke, Leia, Han Solo. Yeah, that's totally true. I mean, it's been kind of like a mixed bag, right, with with the sequels, with the spinoffs. Some of them have done really well. I mean, I think about like The Mandalorian. It's introduced some great new characters. Right. But those haven't been tested on the big screen yet. And like taking something from streaming to the big screen, that's that's a whole other you know, challenge. It's different. The way a film is marketed, the way it's made, the scale, the spectacle that people are expecting, it's it's a completely different ball game. Yeah. So, you know, just because something works on Disney Plus doesn't mean it'll translate to those big box office numbers. A hundred percent. Okay, so so where does that leave Ray? Well, uh the article reveals that there are like two two big projects that are in the running and it's kinda like like a cinematic tug of war happening. It really is. For for her future. On one hand we've got Simon Kinberg. Uh mm -hmm. he's potentially developing a whole new trilogy, right, that would continue the Skywalker saga. Wow. And then on the other hand, you've got Charmino Bay Chinoy. She's got this standalone Ray movie that's that's facing some behind the scenes trouble like writer troubles and it's just it's really interesting to see these two these two very different directions and the challenges they represent yeah let's let's break those down because i think i think with the continuing the skywalker saga you've got like you know the weight of all those legendary characters and storylines i mean it's a lot to live up to for sure but it also gives you like that built-in audience right and the potential for for some truly epic storylines i mean imagine ray rebuilding the jedi order well there you go i mean that's that's exactly what you know what they could do but you also run the risk of falling into that nostalgia trap i mean the article even mentions that specifically oh really like you know how do you balance that so a standalone film on the other hand that offers you know a little more creative freedom you could explore new corners of the galaxy you know you could delve into the force in ways we haven't seen before yeah i like that you could you could really showcase ray's growth as a Jedi Master, it's it's a very different opportunity. It's almost like like two different genres, right? Like within the the Star Wars universe, you know, you've got like one that's leaning into that epic space opera, and then another that's potentially more intimate, character driven. Uh, yeah, and then then there's this this other thing. The article talks about how Lucasfilm, you know develops its movies and they call it a unique ecosystem mm -hmm. so they've got all these projects and like different stages of development overlapping characters overlapping timelines it's kind of wild I, okay so for those of us who are not like hollywood insiders can you can you break that down what what does that actually mean like, how is that different from say how marvel does things so think of marvel like a very carefully planned garden yeah right? every film mm -hmm. meticulously planted cultivated to bloom in a certain order, telling one big interconnected story. Right. Lucasfilm is more like a like a wild forest. Right. You've got all this organic growth happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, different projects, they're intertwining, they're influencing each other. It's it's really unpredictable. So more experimental, like maybe a little chaotic? No be. Uh, what are, what are what are the good and the bad of that approach? Well the the upside is you get more creative freedom. Right. right. You can take more risks. They can test out different ideas, see what connects with the audience without being locked into this this rigid plan. Yeah. But the downside is, you know, you could have inconsistencies. You could have like tonal clashes and it could, it could just lack a sense of overall cohesion in the universe. Right. Right. It's like high risk, high reward. Right. <laughs> OK, let's let's move on, though, because there's this this one part of the article that I found like super thought provoking. 
They compare Star Wars to, get this, a religion. Wow. With the, with the original trilogy being like the Old Testament. Yeah. And then, you know, the filmmakers today are tasked with creating the New Testament. It's, it's, it's kind of a heavy analogy. It's powerful, though. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it speaks to how culturally important Star Wars is. I mean, for a lot of fans, it's... It's way more than just entertainment. It's a mythology. Mm -hmm. You know, it shapes their worldview. It gives them a sense of community. I mean, I've even heard people say it gives them moral guidance. Yeah. So the pressure on these filmmakers, it's it's enormous. They're not just making movies. They're shaping like a cultural touchstone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It really puts it in perspective. No wonder. No wonder they feel the pressure. Right. right. But then, like, how how do you how do you balance that? Right. The yeah. weight of expectation with with the need to innovate to push the franchise forward. I mean, that that seems like a a really tough thing to do. Well, that is the million dollar question. Yeah. And and the article actually suggests that that you know Lucasfilm might be struggling with that with that very dilemma. And they quote an unnamed source that says that Star Wars is a nostalgia-based enterprise and they're running out of ways to create nostalgia. I mean, that's a that's a pretty big statement. Yeah, it's it's provocative for sure. What what do you what do you think they mean by that? Like is is Star Wars doomed to just repeat itself or or is there is there a way to break free from that cycle, from that nostalgia cycle? I mean, that's a valid question. Yeah. Right? And it's tied to the debate about what happens with Rey's character. Do they keep her tied to the Skywalkers? You know, mm -hmm. explore her as the heir to that legacy, or do they do they do something different, something new? Yeah, and and that's where I think this comparison between you know Star Wars on TV and Star Wars in film gets really interesting yeah. because the article points out that like while the films you know seem to be kind of maybe stuck in a rut, the TV shows they're they're flourishing. You know, they've got a lot of creative freedom. They're exploring bold new ideas. It's true. I mean, look at shows like Andor and The Mandalorian. I mean, they're proving that you can tell really compelling Star Wars stories without, you know, being totally reliant on the Skywalker saga or those familiar tropes. So what can what can Lucasfilm learn? Right. What lessons can they learn from from their successes on TV? Can they can they apply those to the big screen and really revitalize the franchise? That's that's what we're all wondering. Right. And I think yeah. the future of Ray's story, I think that that might hold the answer. OK, so we've we've talked about a lot. You know, we've we've talked about Ray and her potential, you know, maybe being the most valuable asset in in the whole Star Wars universe. We've talked about the the competing visions for for her future. Right. We've talked about the the challenge of balancing legacy with innovation. We talked about, you know, how Lucasfilm is developing these movies and, you know, all the pressure that's on these filmmakers to create this new this new chapter, this new testament of Star Wars, and, and we talk about you know what they could learn from from the success of the TV shows. But but the big question remains, where where does Ray go from here? Right. And and what does her journey tell us about the future of of this of this entire like beloved franchise? That's what we'll be diving into next. Yeah. You know, if we're talking about lessons learned from Star Wars TV, one thing that really stands out is how much audiences. Uh, love seeing new corners of the galaxy yeah new new planets new characters new threats exactly new everything and and this article kind of hints at that you know they <sighs> they suggest that uh ray's future might involve like multiple movies not just one. Oh, interesting so so she could show up in in other products even ones that seem kind of unrelated right like like the taika waititi film right or or the sean levy one i mean imagine imagine a, a star wars universe where ray you know she's not she's not just stuck in her own trilogy, right, or her own standalone film, but she's she's popping up in in all these different storylines. Yeah, yeah, that's that would be cool. It would be a, a much more interconnected approach to to storytelling, like almost like a a Star Wars version of the MCU. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. So so like different storylines kind of weaving together, you know, characters crossing paths, and and maybe it's all building towards some some bigger event, some big bad. Yeah, exactly, and and I think that would address you know one of the big criticisms that that people have had about about Lucasfilm, you know, that, that they haven't really developed new characters, you know, beyond the original ones that George Lucas created. But but if you had Ray kind of weaving through these different stories, she could help anchor, you know, new characters, new factions, give them more more weight. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And, and think about it. I mean, you could have cameos, right? You could have team ups. Fans would go crazy seeing Ray, you know, interacting with characters from from different different time periods, different corners of the galaxy. It would just add like this whole other layer of of excitement, you know, and speculation 
to each new film. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, wouldn't that be a like a huge undertaking though? I mean, it would require a lot of a lot of planning, a lot of coordination. I mean, you know, Lucasfilm hasn't always been like the best at that. That's true. It would definitely require, you know, a, a different different approach to development. Maybe something a little closer to that Marvel model, you know, with with Kevin Feige kind of like overseeing everything. But if they could if they could pull it off, I mean, it would be it would be huge. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So, so let's let's say they do this, right? They they make Ray the the connective tissue, you know, of of this new this new interconnected Star Wars universe. Okay. Where where do they where do they take her story? That's the that's the big question, isn't it? I mean, do they do they keep her tied to the Skywalker saga? Yeah. You know, exploring exploring her role as as the heir to to that legacy or do they do they break free right do they send her on on a completely new adventure i mean i yeah. could i could see both working yeah and and you know the the article mentions that daisy ridley herself she's she's excited to come back to the role mm -hmm. she said that time has passed and a lot has changed for her personally so it'll be interesting to come back to someone i know so well but in such a different moment yeah so it sounds like she's she's open to you know, exploring exploring new sides of Ray's character. Yeah, that that makes sense. Maybe maybe they lean into her role as a teacher, right? You know, she's training she's training a new generation of Jedi, rebuilding the Order. Yeah, I like that. Or or maybe she's she's like a a wandering protector. Like oh, okay, yeah. Traveling the galaxy, righting wrongs, like almost like a like a Jedi Knight errant. You know, oh, I like that. Or or imagine this, right? Ray discovers like an ancient Jedi text. It reveals some hidden truth about the force, something that that challenges like everything she thought she knew. And and that sends her on this this quest across the galaxy, you know, leads to a confrontation with with some some new terrifying enemy that we've that we've never seen before. I mean, the possibilities are, are pretty much endless. But but one thing, one thing is for sure, you know, Ray's story, it can't just be about you know, rehashing the past. Right, right. Got to be something new. He's got to push those boundaries. He's got to explore new, new thematic territory. And in the article, they they talk about this tension, right, between between nostalgia and innovation. They quote a source who says, "Star Wars is a nostalgia-based enterprise, and they're running out of ways to create nostalgia." I mean, that's a that's a pretty harsh statement. It is, yeah. Is there is there any truth to that though? Like, yeah. is is that is that the problem that that Lucasfilm is facing? That they you know they need to they need to honor that legacy, but they also need to find a way to to create something new. It's a tough balance. It's like walking a tightrope. I mean, if you lean too heavily on the nostalgia, you're going to alienate you know audiences who are looking for something fresh. But if you just completely abandon the past, you know you lose the the heart and soul of of what makes Star Wars Star Wars. Right, right. So, so maybe, maybe the answer is is finding a way to to bridge that gap, right, between the old and the new. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just repeating the past, you know, maybe they need to find ways to to recontextualize it. You know, to to look at it from from new angles, to use it as a foundation for for something truly original. So, so how does how does that apply to Ray's story, though? Like, what would a bridge between the Skywalker legacy and and a new era of Star Wars look like? Well, it could mean you know, acknowledging the impact that the Skywalker saga has had on on Ray's journey, but also allowing her to to forge her own path. You know, yeah, it could be an, it could mean exploring the Force in ways that that go beyond the, you know, the traditional Jedi versus Sith conflict. Yeah, yeah, it it could even mean challenging the very idea, right, of of what it means to be a Jedi. I mean, that would be that would be something new. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What if Ray's story? What if it becomes less about you know fulfilling a prophecy and and more about defining defining her own destiny? And and maybe that's the key, right, to the future of of Star Wars as a whole. It's not about recreating the the magic of the original trilogy. It's about capturing the the spirit, you know, yeah, right. the spirit of adventure, the hope, the the struggle against tyranny. That's what made those films so so enduring. Yeah, and and you know, it's about telling new stories that that connect with audiences on an emotional level, stories that inspire, that challenge, that that entertain. And, and who better to to lead the charge than than Ray? I mean, she's a character who who embodies both, both the legacy of the past and and the potential of the future. Absolutely. She's a symbol of of hope, of resilience, you know, of, of the power of the individual to make a difference. But but as we've been talking about, the the challenges that Lucasfilm is facing, I mean, they're pretty significant. They they gotta find that balance, right? Between nostalgia and innovation they got to create a cohesive universe a cinematic universe and they got to develop new characters that can that can stand alongside those those icons of the past 
Right. And and they have to do all of this, you know, while navigating this crazy, ever changing entertainment industry. Yeah, with with streaming, you know, and 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 just like audience expectations are constantly changing. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's a, it's a tough it's a tough job. But right. but if they if they succeed, I mean, it could be it could be a new golden age. Right? It really could for for Star Wars. And I'm I'm excited to see what happens. So so we've talked about you know the possibilities, the challenges, the the potential paths you know for Ray's future. But but before we wrap things up, I want to I want to come back to that analogy that that we were discussing earlier from the article. You know this idea of Star Wars as as a religion. Yeah, that was that was pretty powerful. And it, it raises this question, right? This question that I think is is mm. really crucial to to understanding the future of the franchise. Yeah. If if the original trilogy, right? If that's the Old Testament of Star Wars, what will the New Testament look like? I think that's the that's the question that you know that Lucasfilm is is wrestling with right now. Mm. Whether whether they even know it or not, yeah. are they just trying to like recreate those same kinds of stories? You know, just with with new characters, yeah. or or are they willing to to really explore different like fundamentally different themes, ideas, even different genres? You know, within within the Star Wars universe. And that's that's what makes Rey's story so interesting, right? Because she could be that that bridge, that link between that Old Testament, you know, that Skywalker saga and a New Testament that that builds on it but but takes us in, in new and unexpected directions. Yeah. Imagine imagine if Rey's story wasn't just a continuation. Yeah. Right? But it was like like the start of something totally new. What if what if her journey led to like the discovery of ancient force traditions, stuff that that predates even the Jedi and the Sith? Oh wow, yeah. I mean, we've seen hints of that, right, in in other Star Wars stuff, like like the world between worlds and rebels, or or those those ancient Sith rituals in in the High Republic books. There's there's so much like untapped lore about the Force that that they could explore. Exactly, and and Ray, you know, with her her connection to the Force and and her her training being you know kind of unconventional, she could be the the perfect character to to take us into those those uncharted areas. It would be like a really bold move for Lucasfilm. It would. But but it could be like super exciting too. It would it would allow them to like expand the whole scope of the Star Wars universe, you know, like the depth, but but still like honor those those core elements that make it make it so so special. And and it could also be a chance for them to like address some of the criticisms, right? That yeah. that people have had about the the franchise lately. Like, like the feeling that the sequels were were too much like the original films maybe <laughs> or that the the spin-offs haven't haven't really pushed the boundaries enough. Exactly. You know, if they explore like new force traditions, new parts of the galaxy, new new kinds of stories, I think it would show that they're that they're committed to innovation, that they're not afraid to take risks. And it could all start with Rey. Her story could be the beginning of like a whole new era for Star Wars, one that's that's both familiar, you know, but also fresh and exciting, something that makes you think. Yeah. There are always risks, right? Yeah. With any creative project, especially something as as big as Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But but I think it's it's a gamble worth taking. I agree. And honestly, after after reading this article, you know, and, and having this conversation, I'm I'm feeling more optimistic about the future of Star Wars than I have in a in a long time. Me too. Yeah. I think I think the key is for Lucasfilm to to really lean into the potential of of their characters, you know, and and, and their stories. Be willing to to try new things, mm -hmm. and to remember that, that what makes Star Wars so great is is its ability to to capture the imagination and to inspire hope. Well said. So, what do you think? What what do you think the future holds for for Rey and for the Star Wars universe? Do you think Lucasfilm will will play it safe? You know, stick with what's familiar. Or will they will they be brave and and forge a new path? What do you think? Well, the Force, as they say, is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. I I'm hoping for some surprises. This has been a really great deep dive, and and thanks for for joining us on this journey to a galaxy far, far away. The pleasure was all mine. And until next time, may the Force be with you. Yeah!